Blessed be the name of the Lord. Good morning. This is Bishop James Antensaki of the Christ Church International in London, United Kingdom. It's a blessing once again to come your way with God's word of hope for your day today. Uh, this morning, I want to encourage you from Joshua chapter 9 and the verses 12 to 16. And it says, this bread of ours, we took hot for our provision from our houses on the day we departed to come to you. But now look, it is dry and moldy. Then they went on to say, these wineskins, which we filled with new and see, they are torn, and these are garments. And our sandals have become old because of our very long journey. And then the scripture says in the verse number 14, Then the men of Israel took some of their provisions. They took it, but they did not ask counsel of the Lord. They took of their provision and did not ask counsel from the Lord. The Bible says, so the Israelite leaders examined their bread, but they did not consult the Lord. Then the Bible says, Joshua went ahead and signed a peace treaty with them, and the leaders of Israel ratified their agreement with a binding oath. Then three days later, the facts came out. These people of Gibeon lived nearby. They had not traveled from anywhere. They had tricked the Israelites, and the Israelites did not consult God. They were asked by God to take over every nation as they went on their way to their promised land. But these people were wise. They came, tricked them. But the important core of my message was that they produced some form of evidence. The Israelites did not consult God. That is the key thing this morning. The Israelites did not consult God. This morning I want to ask you, have you prayed about that thing? You see, the account in Joshua chapter 9, verse 12 to 16, which I have shared with you this morning, is the fact that on the surface, the evidence seemed to match the traveler's story. They came as travelers. They were even, as you live nearby, they said no. Because they were afraid that if they said yes, they would be part of the bracket of people that the Israelites were supposed to conquer. And they were afraid. But then they compelled the Israelites to swear an oath. And they bound themselves by the oath. And they took of their things and did not consult God. So I'm saying to you that on the surface, the evidence seemed to match the traveler's story. Their wineskins were tattered, and their clothing and sandals were truly worn out. Their bread was moldy. They certainly looked as if they had traveled a great distance. Their story seemed so authentic that the Israelite leaders entered into an unbreakable covenant with them. But the leaders had forgotten to seek the counsel of God before they signed on the dotted line. They realized too late that the men were deceitful. But they had no choice but to honor the covenant. And it's not always easy to keep a promise. But it's especially difficult to honor a promise gained through the deceitful actions of another. And when you make an important decision, you may have a tendency to weigh the facts as you see them. This morning, every day of our life is full of decision making. Some evidence will be presented to you. On the face of it, it may look genuine. But can you please? Speak to God about it. This morning, he has inspired me to speak to you about checking with him about everything. It's so important because a lot of people have fallen into so many traps because they signed certain things without checking with God. The evidence may look true, but there is always a truth behind every evidence. You see, in the case of the story of Joseph and Potiphar's wife, the Bible says it was Potiphar's wife who demanded that Joseph should sleep with her. The boy ran away. He did not. He ran away. The Bible says that the woman took hold of his clothing. He left it behind. Now, when the woman's husband came in the evening, she took Joseph's clothes and presented it as though Joseph had attempted to rape her and that this is the evidence of what the boy left behind. But we know the story from what we read. And from the evidence and the truth is that the evidence she presented is really not the evidence, even though it looked like evidence. 
That is why in every step of your life, this day as you set about your day, may the Lord guide you, submit everything to God. There are certain things you must not sign, even though the evidence looks like everything is all right. Check with God and have your peace about it before you endorse anything. It's important to assess the reputation of an individual or organization. And as you do all those things, it is advisable to pour over figures on the balance sheet or to check references for every form of anyone that you want to relate with, whether an employment or you are recruiting somebody or you are befriending someone for the first time or you are giving business to another person or asking someone to help you. It is good to, all, to do all these things. But all these things which are wise, which are good, which are prudent steps, above all, I came to encourage you, don't forget to seek the counsel of God. To ask for wisdom and discernment. And pray before you make important decisions that can save you a great deal of trouble down the road. I pray for you this morning in the name of Jesus. That no matter the evidence presented to you, may the Lord help you to see the truth behind the evidence. There is always an evidence behind the evidence. And may the Spirit of God help you in Jesus' name. I pray for you that God will prepare you to understand what is best for you. To see what you cannot with your own eyes. Pray that God will check in your spirit and compel you to wait on him and to do something that is within his will. I pray for you that God will help you to heed to his counsel. I pray for the peace of God to flood your soul so that when you are taking a step, you take the step in the right direction, whether in the buying of a house, whether in the relocation of the family, whether we turn on a new job, whether getting into a new ministry, whatever it is that you want to do, I pray in Jesus' name that the Lord will help you make the right decision with the right peace in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray in Jesus' name that the counsel of God will flood your heart, but the discipline of waiting on God and seeking God, no matter the pressure, will become your line of behavior. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray this morning, every decision you are about to make, may God help you to check with Him and receive an inspiration from God. It may come in any way that God would impress on our heart. At best that you receive the peace of God to take that step in the name of Jesus Christ. May the many decisions and may the things that are coming to your mind and the activities around you, may they not put so much pressure on you to commit the mistake that Joshua and the man of God committed in those days. I pray that this day will be a peaceful day for you. I pray that Lord God Almighty will favor you and strengthen you. May the defense of God be your defense. May the favor of God be your shield today. May the mercies of God escort you through the day. I declare you shall finish well in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God, who died and rose again triumphantly on the third day and is the source of life and the giver of hope. In Jesus' most excellent and holy name, amen and amen. And until I come your way again tomorrow, I'm Bishop James Hansensaki of the Christ Church International in London, United Kingdom. You are above and not beneath. You are the head and not the tail. Have a blessed, fruitful, peaceful, and productive day. Bye-bye.